the beautiful pictures that we see on cat food packaging don't tell us the whole story. Our kittens need the best in terms of health and nutrition, and raw food is what's going to give them their best start in life. Feeding raw can be very simple. The easiest way I find is to have a base recipe that you start from, and then slowly introducing new ingredients to that base recipe, and then also introducing some whole foods to make the diet complete. Because my animals have food allergies, I like to start with a really clean base recipe made out of rabbit. Now the ingredients percentage is 10% bone, 15% organ meat, which is split between liver and kidney or spleen, and the rest is made up of meat. Kittens have higher nutrient requirements than adults, and we're going to meet that by giving them enough organ meat, enough variety, and by feeding them the right amount. Additionally, we need to keep in mind that cats have a higher requirement for the amino acid taurine. Now, taurine is present in high amounts in liver, in the meat of the heart and the tongue, and particularly more so in smaller animals than in larger animals. So if you, like me, cannot feed smaller animals because your animals are sensitive, then you might wanna consider adding a taurine supplement to your kitten's base mix. Starting with a ground up mix is a good idea, also because kittens don't get their permanent teeth until they're between four and six months old. So they would struggle to chew on large pieces of bone. So a ground up mix would include bone, but in a form that they can easily take in and then digest. Once your kitten is old enough, then you can start introducing whole bones if that's what you choose to feed your cat. Some good options are rabbit ribs and rabbit legs, which are actually also very good if your kitten is a color point or Siamese kitty who tend to be a little bit more food sensitive. But you also have the option of feeding chicken, particularly chicken wingtips, chicken necks, chicken feet, and chicken backs. Now keep in mind that bones are a choking hazard, so you always have to supervise your cat whenever they are eating whole bones. And while manufacturers make it seem like it's really difficult to balance nutritional needs for kittens, when you're feeding a whole foods raw food diet, then it's actually fairly simple. And even keeping up the calcium to phosphorus balance, meaning the bone to meat ratio, is actually really simple. I also want you to think about adding some whole foods to your kitten's diet. Whole foods can be whole eggs, particularly quail eggs are pretty small, and if fed with the shell, then they are complete as they are. But also fish or whole prey, such as pinky mice or mice. These are fantastic sources of variety and of nutrients for your kitten, and because they are complete on their own, then they can be added on top of your prepared mix. Additionally, these teach your kitten to like and to eat different foods. Now, kittens actually learn what to eat from their mom, and their taste buds develop between four and 10 weeks. But when we get them, we can still get them to try new things and get them to develop a palate for a wide variety of foods, which will set them up for better health in the future. So this is all fantastic information, but how and when do you actually start feeding your kitten? The answer is right away. As soon as your kitten gets home, the first meal I would offer your ground up mix. Usually kittens will take to it right away. They love to eat raw meat, so there shouldn't be any trouble with transitioning them. However, some kittens, especially if they're a little bit older, might struggle with the switch going from whatever they're coming from, so the breeder's place or the shelter, and coming to your house. So maybe switching them might be a little bit challenging. So do have about a week's supply of whatever they were eating, whether it be kibble or the type of raw food that they were eating at the breeders or the shelter, and start feeding that and then phase in some raw. Now mixing raw bones and kibble is really not a good idea because kibble actually raises the pH of the stomach making it so that the food is not digested as well. But what you can do if your kitten is struggling and wants to eat the kibble that it was used to, then you can definitely add a little bit of raw meat, just plain meat, to their kibble and get them used to the taste. Eventually you want to then split this into two meals. So you'll have one meal is kibble and then one meal is your raw complete mix and then eventually phase out the kibble. Once your kitten is consistently eating her ground up base recipe, then you can start adding single ingredient changes to the base recipe about one week at a time. Keep an eye on your kitty, on her appetite, and on her poop particularly to check to see if there are any issues. And if there aren't, then you can consider this new ingredient a good one and go on and try a new one and add variety to her diet. 
figuring out how much to feed your kitty will depend on your kitty's expected adult weight. Now, if your kitty is a specific breed, then you can look at what the breed standard says for what the ideal weight of an adult would be. But if your kitty is just a common kitty, then you can just go with the general numbers, which are 3.5 kilo or 8 pounds for female kitties and 4.5 kilos or 10 pounds for male kitties. You then take 2-3% to of that weight and feed it to them daily. Now, younger kittens under 4 months old should eat about 4 meals a day, so then you can split it into 4 ways. And as your kitty gets older, you should downsize on the number of meals until you get to about 2 meals a day when they are about 6 months old. If you follow this formula, your kitten is going to get exactly the nutrition it needs and the amount of nutrition will decrease as their growing needs decrease automatically, which is why I prefer to use this one. And personally, I prefer to go more towards the 3% of the range because I prefer to have a little bit extra and then decide to maybe feed a little bit less if I see that my kitten is a little bit on the chubby side versus the opposite, realizing that my kitty is a little bit skinny and I don't have enough prepared. Using a body condition score chart is very helpful in this case and what you want to do is you want to touch your kitten's ribs if you can feel them easily then your kitten is perfect weight but if you can feel your kitten's ribs but it feels like he's maybe wearing a heavy sweater then your kitten might be getting a little bit heavier and you might want to slowly bring down that percentage maybe from three percent to like 2.8 percent just slightly and then see how that goes it goes without saying that if you touch your kitty and all you can feel is bones, clearly your kitty is not eating enough and you should be feeding more. But if you stick to the 3% rule, then you'll be doing fine. When I first started feeding raw, I found getting information was fairly simple, but figuring out how to apply that information to the specific needs of my cats was a little bit more challenging. What I didn't know then, which I know now, is that the easiest thing you can do is look at your kitten's poo and those will tell you exactly how well you're doing and how well your kitten is adapting to the food and whether the changes that you're making when you're introducing new ingredients are healthy for your kitten or maybe there's something they're sensitive to and you should back off. If your kitten's poop is light in color and very, very hard, kind of like a little stone, then you are definitely feeding too much bone and you should come down in percentage a little bit. Maybe come down 1% to start and see how that develops. If your kitten's stool is softer, pliable, maybe mucousy, if it smells really bad, or if it's diarrhea, then definitely something is wrong. So the first thing you wanna do is take a stool sample and go to your vet and have it tested for worms because those can cause problems in kittens. The other thing that you want to look at is your recipe. So you may be feeding either not enough bone or you may be feeding too many organs or you may have introduced new organs too quickly. So you have to kind of go back to your base recipe and then slowly remake the changes. The last thing that it could be, which is the trickiest, is it could be a food allergy. Now, food allergies can be easily dealt with, which is why I made this video. My animals are all sensitive and I struggle with it until they taught me exactly how to do it and they taught me better than all of the books could teach me. Now, if you like this video and you learned and you are inspired to start raw, then give us a like. It really helps with the YouTube algorithm. Thank you for watching us. Give your kitten a kiss and um, we'll see you in the next one. Bye.